Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5, the discriminant. Now what the discriminant enables us to do is allows us to determine the number of roots, and I'll explain what that means in a second, of a quadratic. So that's why we use discriminant. I'll explain how we calculate the discriminant in a second. But what do I mean by roots? Well, if I was to sketch a quadratic graph, we know it looks something a bit like this, and the roots are the x-intercepts, as we explored in another video. These are the roots. So in this particular case, we can see we have two roots, but there might be no roots, or it might sort of clip the x-axis, where we seem to only get one distinct root. And the way we determine discriminant is this. If we have a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c, then the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Now imagine we wanted to try and find the roots. We would just set this equal to zero, wouldn't we? Because we're making the y value zero. If y is equal to this, we're making the y value zero to find these roots. And then we could use the quadratic formula to find those roots. So we'd use x is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now can you see that if b squared minus 4ac was less than zero, you'd have the square root of a negative number, which we can't do with real numbers, and therefore you wouldn't have any solution to this, you wouldn't have any root. So this gives us our first scenario, that if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then we would have no real roots for our quadratic. And in terms of what the graph would look like, if I had a quadratic like this, you can see that that quadratic never hits the x-axis. We have no intercepts, we have no roots. What about the other situations? Now, if b squared minus 4ac was equal to 0, then let's look at this quadratic equation. That is 0 there, so we'd have minus b plus 0 and minus b minus 0. Now, either way, we get minus b. So we would only actually get one solution to x. x would just be equal to minus b over 2a, because this is just 0. And we say that we have equal roots. Or another way of saying that is that we only have one distinct solution for our quadratic. Equal roots is a bit of a funny way of saying it. We're basically saying we have two solutions, but the same value. And I'm not going to explain in this video why we might say that, but I do cover that in my slides. But what it would actually look like is this graph here, is that the quadratic graph would touch the x-axis, and you can see you're only going to get one distinct solution. So we have equal roots. They might both be minus one, for example. And then the final situation is where b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, and in this case we get two distinct roots. And if we were to draw that, it would look like this. So it would cross the x-axis in two different places. We have two distinct different roots. Now let's solve some quick problems to do with this. We want to determine the discriminant and hence how many roots each of these quadratics has. So for part A, if we calculate b squared minus 4ac, well in this case the a is the number in front of the x squared, so a is equal to 1. The b is equal to the number in front of the minus x, the coefficient of x, that's minus 2. And the c is the constant term, the term without the x, that's the 1. And if we substitute that into here, then the discriminant, and by the way, we sometimes write the discriminant as capital delta, that means the discriminant in this particular case. And we do b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 1 times 1, if we substitute into this formula. So that's 4 minus 4, and we get 0. Now we saw a second ago that if the discriminant was zero, then we had equal roots. What about part b? Here we've got a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1 because it's 1x, and c is equal to 3. And if we calculate the discriminant, the discriminant is b squared, which is 1 squared, minus 4 times 2 times 3, which is equal to 1 minus 24 is minus 23. Now this is less than zero, and therefore we have no real roots, as we saw from earlier. And then C, here we've got A is equal to 3, B is equal to minus 1, because it's minus 1x, and C is equal to minus 7. And if we calculate the discriminant, the discriminant is B squared, which is minus 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 3 
times minus 7, that is equal to 1 plus, because we're subtracting a negative number, 84, that gives us 85, and that's a positive value, and therefore we would have two distinct roots. Now let's look at these harder problems. This is an Excel exam question. The equation x squared plus 2px plus 3p plus 4 equals 0 has equal roots. So do you remember it has equal roots if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Let's first write what the a, b and c are. So we can see the a here is 1 because it's 1x squared. The b is equal to 2p, the constant in front of the x. And the c is 3p plus 4. So if we calculate the discriminant, the discriminant is b squared, so 2p all squared, minus 4 times 1 times 3p plus 4. Now if we're told it has equal roots, then that discriminant will be equal to 0. So now we just have to solve this equation. So that is 4p squared, not 2p squared. Then we get minus 4 times 3p minus 12p, and minus 4 times 4 is minus 16 equals 0. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 4. That factorises to give p minus 4, p plus 1 equals 0. So p is 4, or p is equal to minus 1. Now let's just say that I also required that p is greater than 0, because they often do that in the exam. Then this is the value we want. We want that p is equal to 4. And then it says for part b, for this value of p, solve the equation. So if p was 4, then we can substitute it into this. So we have x squared plus 2 times 4 is 8, so we have 8x. And 3 times 4 plus 4 is 16. And then we can see that this factorises as x plus 4 squared equals 0, and that means that x is only minus 4. And that's consistent with the question, because the question says we have equal roots, i.e. just one distinct root, and indeed we only had one distinct root. And then finally this exam question again, question 3. Given that the equation 2qx squared plus qx minus 1 equals 0, and we're saying this has no real roots. We want to show that we end up with this quadratic inequality here. Q squared plus 8Q is less than 0. So whenever it talks about the number of roots, we know we have to use a discriminant. So let's do our usual thing. We know the A here is 2Q. The B here is Q. And the C is minus 1. And the discriminant would be B squared, which is Q squared, minus 4 times A times C. And that is equal to q squared plus 8q. Now we know when we have no real roots, the discriminant is less than 0. And therefore, we have answered part A. We wanted to show that this inequality holds. And then part B is to hence find the set of possible values of q. So we just need to solve this quadratic inequality. Now we explored how to do this in another video. We, we just factorise it. And then, do you remember, we just sketch it. So we're going to sketch uh, y against q in this case, because we have q instead of x. So the roots are 0 and minus 8. So if y is equal to q times q plus 8, we're wondering whether y value is less than 0. Well, the y value is less than 0 in this section of the graph. So we can see q is between minus 8 and and 0. And that is the final solution. So if q is any value between minus 8 and 0, excludes these values, then this original quadratic will have no real roots. What confuses some students? They think, well, we do have solutions for q, but we're saying that there's no solutions here. But we've got different things here. Here we found some values of q such that this original equation in terms of x had no solutions. So we're saying if we found a value of q here, we actually can't find a value of x that satisfies this original equation. So there's two different variables here, q and x.